Hi, my name is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast of the New Testament. I'll be using as the text the King James Version, along with the Joseph Smith Translation. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll also be using quotes from general authorities of the Church, the Apostles and Prophets, and BYU professors and others, and uh, every word out of the Scriptures themselves. So if you're ready for a really detailed analysis of the New Testament, you've come to the right place. Welcome. Hi, welcome back. This will be for Ephesians chapter 3. The heading reads, Gentiles are fellow heirs with Israel. The love of Christ passeth all understanding. Verse 1, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ among you Gentiles, for the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word, as ye have heard, that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery of Christ, as I wrote before in few words. Paul mentions three mysteries in Ephesians. The first mystery pertains to proselytizing period called the times of the Gentiles. The second is the dispensation of the fullness of times. And the third is marriage and the church. That was by Rodney Turner. Verse 4, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Paul employs the term mystery 20 times in his letters in discussing Christ, the gospel, the resurrection, Israel, the Gentiles, speaking in tongues, iniquity, and godliness. A mystery is a divine secret or unknown truth. Three mysteries are discussed in Ephesians. The first mystery pertains to a process that began in the days of the apostolic church. For the first time since the flood, the non-Israelitish nations, Gentiles, were to be given the opportunity to receive the gospel and be adopted into immortal Israel. In doing so, they would partake of the unsearchable riches of Christ. This proselytizing period is called the times of the Gentiles. Again, that was Rodney Turner. Verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the, of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power, unto me who am less than the least of all saints in this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is saying that Christ and God the Father are two distinct persons. Verse 15, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Paul said, I bow my knees, as do we all, unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. In a manifestation to Brigham Young after his death, Joseph Smith told his successor to be sure to instruct the saints to keep the Spirit of the Lord, promising that if they would do so, they will find themselves just as they were organized by our Father in heaven before they came into the world. Our Father in heaven organized the human family, but they are all disorganized and in great confusion. Brigham also said that Joseph showed him the pattern, how they were in the beginning. He said that he could not describe it, but that there there must yet be a perfect chain from Father Adam to his latest posterity. During an illness, Jedediah Grant visited the spirit world two nights in succession. He reported a perfect order and government that existed there, saying that the righteous gathered together, that there were no wicked spirits among them, and that they were organized in family capacities. To my astonishment, he said, when I looked at families, there was a deficiency in some. There was a lack, for I saw families that would not be permitted to come and dwell together because they had not honored their their calling here. That was by uh, Millet and McConkie. Verse, uh, or Joseph Fielding Smith said, In this a family in heaven and in earth, yes, that family is composed of those who go to the temple of the Lord and there are sealed or married for time and for all eternity, according to the law of the Lord. Marriage is to be eternal, just as the Lord declares here in the words that I have read, and when a man and a woman go to the house of the Lord and are married for time and for all eternity, they take upon them certain covenants that they will be true and faithful in that union. Children born in that union will be the children of that father and mother, not only in mortal life, but in all eternity, and they become members of the family of God in heaven and on earth, as spoken of by Paul, and that family order should never be broken. 
verse 16, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may, may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Elder Maxwell said, We must deepen our faith until it becomes the real thing. Otherwise, when the heat of the day comes, if we are not, to use Peter and Paul's words, grounded, rooted, established, and settled, we will wither under the scorching summer of circumstances. Verse 18, May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. George F. Richards said, More than forty years ago I had a dream, which I am sure was from the Lord. In this dream I was in the presence of my Savior as he stood in midair. He spoke no word to me, but my love for him was such that I have not words to explain. I know that no mortal man can love the Lord as I experienced the love, that love for the Savior unless God reveals it unto him. I would have remained in his presence, but there was a power drawing me away from him, and as a result of that dream I had this feeling that no matter what might be required at my hands, what the gospel might entail in to me, I would do what I what I should, what I should be asked to do, even to the laying down of my life. And so, when we read in the scriptures what the Savior said to the to his disciples, "In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there ye may be also." I think that is where I want to be. If only I can go be with my Savior and have that same sense of love that I had in that dream, it will be the goal of my existence, the desire of my life. Verse 20, Now unto him that, that is able to do it exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ, Jesus through the ages, world without end. Amen. That's the end of the chapter, and we'll see you next time. Bye.